Did you know Ontario's Great Lakes are one of the world's most biodiverse environments for freshwater fish, containing over 160 species within its waters? Some of these are extremely unique and practically unknown to the public. For example, were you aware that Ontario is actually home to four native species of lamprey? Or perhaps that London, Ontario's waters has a fish that easily lives to over 100 years old with no signs of old age. Sadly, the information being taught to the public on Ontario's rare fish species is very limited, as most government documents for anglers don't show more than 25 to 40 species. There are so many more species in Ontario worth taking the time to learn about. In this video, we are going to introduce you to over 25 fish you very likely have never heard of before, with the goal of helping you become a more knowledgeable multi-species angler, teaching you where they live, how big they get, and what makes them unique. You will want to stick around to the end of this video as well, since we will be saving the biggest of all the species for last, a fish that can grow to 61 inches and 123 pounds in weight. And this species is not a lake sturgeon, like many would guess. So without further ado, let's get into our video, starting with our first fish. Did you know that a subspecies of trout was wiped out by acid rain in the 1970s? This species was the Aurora trout, which is basically if a brook trout had no spots and more of a navy-toned coloration as opposed to a bright neon one. They have only been native to two lakes in Ontario, that being White Pine Lake and Whirligig Lake, which is right in the center of Lady Evelyn Smoothwater Provincial Park above Sudbury. As previously said, these two lakes were destroyed by acid rain in 1971, killing all of its fish. Thankfully, a man named Paul Graff, who was a hatchery manager in Charlton, Ontario, had the last specimens of Aurora trout available some 20 years later after the lakes were repaired using lime. Thanks to him, the Aurora trout are back out there in the wild, where they belong today. Moving on to our second fish, most anglers are aware that we have the long-nosed gar spread all throughout the Great Lakes region. However, most anglers don't know we actually have not just one, but two species of gar in Ontario. Introducing the spotted gar. They don't grow as big as the long-nosed gar, only reaching two to three feet and weighing four to six pounds, and they live for eight to 10 years. So where can we find this hidden gar species? We currently only have three established populations in Ontario, all along the coastal wetlands of Lake Erie's North Shoreline. These environments serve them well as they need clear and calm pools of weedy water to survive efficiently. But enough about this dinosaur. Let's move on to one of Ontario's rarest fish species. I know what you're thinking. Northern pike aren't rare. What is this? This is a type of essox, but it's not a northern pike. Let me introduce you to the grass pickerel. They are kind of like if pike had smaller cousins, you could only tell them apart by their smaller size. And also the obvious black vertical line that's right underneath their eye, plus a different pattern on the body. Their average length is 6 to 12.5 inches, but record grass pickerels can reach a size of 2 pounds and reach lengths of around 15 inches. Grass pickerel feed mainly on fishes and crayfish, but will also eat frogs, tadpoles, and aquatic insects. As their name suggests, riparian and aquatic vegetation are important to grass pickerel, as they use it for cover as well as spawning habitat. Sadly, despite being super fun to catch on ultra-light gear, grass pickerels are endangered in Ontario, and their habitats are shrinking. They are only found at approximately 14 locations in southern Ontario. They live in coastal wetlands and tributaries of Lakes Ontario, Erie, Huron, and St. Clair, as well as the Ottawa and St. Lawrence Rivers. In the Sydenham watershed and immediate surrounding area, they have been recorded in the Lower East Sydenham, Walpole Island, Little Bear Creek, and Lake St. Clair, as well as other nearby tributaries. Let's hope their numbers go up and we have another Esox fish to target. However, Ontario actually has one more uncommon Esox fish within its range, and that would be the chain pickerel. In fact, in the St. Lawrence River area, I would say there's enough of a population that they are targetable to the common angler. Some also occasionally get caught in the Bay of Quinn. The average size for a full-grown chain pickerel is 24 inches and from 1.8 to 3 pounds, and have been known to reach 31 inches in rare instances. However, 
Let's not labor this species further, as it's something not uncommon to Canada as a whole, unlike other species like our native lamprey. As stated in the intro, Ontario is actually home to four native species of freshwater lamprey. All of the lampreys are threatened species, which are extremely difficult to study in the wild due to their life cycle. All of them are being threatened by lamprecide, which is used to manage invasive sea lamprey to protect our fishery. Sadly, a byproduct of the lamprecide has been killing our native species, with them only now surviving in isolated pockets. Also, all lampreys like salmon migrate upstreams, where they make a nest of stones, spawn, and shortly die after. The lampreys also have an interesting life cycle where they start as amicoetes and then through metamorphosis transition into lamprey. What are the differences between the four species? Well, the northern brook lamprey is not a parasite and lives only off of plants and doesn't eat for six months as an adult. So that one we can call a good boy. The rest not so much as the silver lamprey has the ability to live for an extra year if it manages to attach itself to a fish, which is massive in size like a sturgeon. These freshwater species don't get half the size of sea lamprey, as the chestnut lamprey gets the biggest at 14 inches in maximum length. Let's move on to another species now, as these guys, although unique, can be kind of disgusting. These little guys are interesting. They are called stone cats, due to their habit of hiding near or under stones in the fast-moving large creeks to large rivers they live in. Stone cats typically reach four to eight inches in length and live for five to six years. This species actually has venom glands in the bases of their pectoral spines that can cause pain similar to a wasp sting. Stone cats are an indicator species as they cannot tolerate highly polluted or heavily silted waters and wrong water temperatures. Both parents actually show parental care Ontario also has other four similar small catfish species called mad toms, which we will briefly show at the end of this video. Let's move on to a species that grows a little bit bigger. Now I know what you're thinking, why did I include this fish? It doesn't look like much, right? It looks like a carp without barbels. That's what I thought first too, but after some research, it became apparent that like the transformers, there's more to them than meets the eye. Do you remember how I said at the start of the video that there's a fish in the Great Lakes that lives to over 125 years old? Let that thought settle in, for example. That means that if it's 2024 right now, this fish would have been born in the year 1899. The big mouth buffalo is that fish, even when they are a century old, they show no age-related declines, but instead improvements relative to younger individuals. They also have the potential to get huge with the world record being 49.5 inches and weighing 76 and a half pounds. They have been around a long time unlike a certain new species in Lake Superior. Have you ever looked at a walleye and said, you know what would be great? If we could make this fish the size of a sunfish, add more spikes to it and make it a violent killing machine? Well, whether you have or haven't asked that, we have the fish for you. Introducing the Eurasian Ruff, it's honestly like if the walleye had a little brother that was rabid and destroyed all your stuff. If you haven't guessed it, Eurasian ruff are an invasive species from Europe and Asia. They can reach up to 9.8 inches or 25 centimeters in length, but are usually around half that size and typically live for 7 to 11 years. Currently, they are dominating the northern shores of Lake Superior and have been recently confirmed just outside of Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. This fish is insanely good at multiplying as they can breed in the first year of their life, and one female can produce about 200,000 eggs per year. Currently, the use of pheromones are being investigated as a possible way to control their movements. What's interesting about this specific pheromone they are studying is that rough release it into the water when it's injured in order to warn other rough to stay away. It truly would be a fascinating fish if it wasn't eating everything it came by in our Great Lake. Now for another invasive species. Odds are, if you ever have gone for a walk along Hamilton's Bayfront Park, you likely saw a goldfish in the water and asked, is that supposed to be there? The answer is no, no, it's not. Goldfish have been in our waters since the 19th century. However, likely due to climate change, our waters have become warmer and our goldfish populations have recently skyrocketed. A biological scientist named Nicholas Mandrake has said, there are literally millions of goldfish in the Great Lakes, 
if not tens of millions. These goldfish are also growing massive with the potential of reaching 19 inches and 9 pounds. These golden creatures seem to be here to stay, so don't be afraid to give them a real nice lip piercing sometime soon, if you know what I mean. Our next species may be a lot more hesitant to accept your free lip piercings. If you know anything about shad, you'll know that they can often be used as fishing bait. But did you know that they actually grow a lot bigger than bait-sized fish and don't stay small for very long? In fact, in colder and northern waters, like within Ontario, they actually grow a lot bigger than in warmer climates. When they are 3 years old, they will usually reach 11 inches, and when they are 10 years old, 15.7 inches. These guys are planktivorous in early life, feeding mainly on phytoplankton and zooplankton, sometimes eating so much they collapse the zooplankton population in the lake. If that's what they eat, no wonder they were so tough to catch on your rod and line, right? But don't worry as they are also known to eat sediment and sand to help with digestion in their body's gizzard. Gizzard shad spawn in large numbers and can reach densities high enough to ensure that many of them survive past the first year, making them essentially invulnerable to fish predation. In some lakes, 80% of the lake's biomass can be just this species alone, which is very different from our next rare contestant for this video. I have added the slimy American eel. We all know that they are in Ontario and that they are endangered, but does the average angler really know more about them than that? Is there more to learn about them? Well, yes there is. Did you know these fish make tremendous migration journeys to spawn? They actually start their life cycle all the way out in the Atlantic Ocean, in an area known as the Sargasso Sea. They actually have a bit of a metamorphosis in their life cycle too. After the eggs hatch and the early stage larvae develop into leptocephaly, the young eels move toward North America, where they metamorphose into glass eels and enter freshwater systems where they grow as yellow eels until they begin to mature. During the day, they hide in mud, sand, or gravel, very close to shore. But at night, they turn into hunters, feeding on crustaceans, aquatic insects, small insects, and anything they can find. There truly is a lot more to these guys than just their endangered status. Although I think it could definitely use some brighter colors, though, like our next fish has on it. No doubt you have probably heard of and known of darters being in southern Ontario waters. They don't get that big, but have many varieties. Whenever a newbie angler catches a log perch and doesn't know what it is, you get the satisfaction of being the first to tell him. It's a log perch darter. However, one of the darter species really caught my eye, that being the rainbow darter. It grows about 2 to 3 inches, and when it's spawning season, it can have amazing colors. These fish are insectivores which feed on bugs, crayfish, and fly larvae. It is an indicator species, as it is very sensitive to pollution and silt, and has to stay in clean, pollution-free water to survive. When it comes to being a rainbow darter, it pays to be the big guy, as the big fish tend to grow faster, live longer, and have more babies. Speaking of more babies, our next fish also tends to have a lot of them. The Rudd, this fish was obviously named after the famous Ant-Man actor, Paul Rudd. That's a true fact, honestly, even though he's only been alive since 1969, there have been reports of this fish living up to the age of 17 years. The Ontario record for Rudd is 15 inches, but I could swear that I've seen some posted online much bigger, as a mature Rudd can reach 18 inches in length and 3 pounds. This celebrity fish is ridiculously invasive. Originally native to the seas of Europe, this fish has been able to invade. Ireland, United States, Morocco, Madagascar, Norway, Tunisia, New Zealand, Spain, and Canada, of course. Rudd prefer clear waters rich in plants for their natural habitat. The fact that they feed on aquatic vegetation might have something to do with that, as Rudd can consume up to 40% of their body weight in vegetation per day, 80% of which is discharged as waste, releasing nutrients into the water column. No wonder Lake Ontario can smell kind of wonky sometimes. Let's just briefly go over the next three and some honorable mentions before revealing our final fish that can weigh up to 123 pounds, Arctic char. I just thought I would add these guys because I honestly wasn't aware that the Hudson Bay, Ontario shoreline actually has populations of Arctic char in them. I suppose it definitely makes sense though, since it's in Arctic climate up there, it will have Arctic char. This area is incredibly remote though, and I honestly have no idea how anyone would ever be able to access these rivers. Quillback. These guys just kind of pick at the bottom, 
feeding in schools, searching for insect larvae, mollusks, aquatic vegetation, and other things to eat. They can live for 52 years and are typically 15 to 20 inches on average, but can get to 26 inches and weigh eight pounds. Other than their cool dorsal fin, I wasn't able to find much to them. I know anglers catch them a lot in the Thames River and that's pretty much it. Tench. These European fish are starting to build up an invasive population in the Bay of Quinte and the Upper St. Lawrence near Cornwall. They are slippery, feed at night, and do well in low oxygenated waters. Fish weighing over one pound are known to give great fights to anglers. Some honorable mentions include Lake Sturgeon, Baufin, Tadpole Mad Tom, Margin Mad Tom, Brindled Mad Tom, Northern Mad Tom, and Northern Hogsuckers. Now as promised, I have saved the biggest fish for last and that would be the Flathead Catfish. The Flathead Catfish is no stranger to the Great Lakes Basin, but until recently, it had always stayed on the American side of Lake Erie for about a century. Over a six year period, researchers have netted 11 flathead juveniles from the lower Thames River near Tilbury, which is a sign that not only are the fish present, but they are breeding in our waters. Researchers say they're flourishing in such large numbers south of the border that they've started to move north to avoid overpopulation. The average size for flathead catfish is huge, ranging from 15 to 45 inches for adults, while having the potential to reach 61 inches and weigh 123 pounds. Ontario may very likely have a new river monster making its waterways home in the near future. Having ecologists worried and anglers excited for new local noodling and angling opportunities coming in the future. Hey everyone, I don't know about you guys, but I definitely would love to catch some flathead catfish in the future. Uh, thank you for watching this far into my video. It took a, a lot of time and a lot of research to put this together, so I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something from it. Uh, if so, maybe consider subscribing to this channel, right? Because if you enjoyed this video, you're not going to want to miss out on future things I'm going to make similar to it. So, anyway, you guys are awesome. Thanks for watching my video. Please give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys on the riverbank in the future.